so let's just look at the framework in, in uh, as a quick overview. Um, to begin with, the framework has five core tenants. Uh, the first is identify, basically understand what you have in your organization. Protect, which is to figure out how you're going to defend that stuff, how you're going to protect the things you identified in tenant number one. Um, detect, which is ongoing um, uh, monitoring for, for uh, breaches and different types of infiltrations that may be happening. Um, respond, which is controlled, looking at ways to respond when a breach happens. And then recovery, which are the tenants necessary to be able to get your business back up and running to 100% after a breach has been um, thwarted and you've responded to what's there, but now you need to get yourself back to um, back up to sea level to be able to continue to run your business at full capacity. Um, the way they the the way they implement this um, is that as an organization you want to put together basically your target profile. So you go through the um, the 108 different controls in the cybersecurity framework and figure out of those which ones are most uh, pertinent to your organization. Um, there are many that are appropriate for every organization that's out there, and then there are some that are a little more specific. Um, if you're not using third-party distribution channels, then maybe um, in uh, a, a, a control discussing whether or not those people have access to your network doesn't really matter to you. But the core tenants around things like data, data flow, data security, um, data backup, uh, data encryption, those types of things are all appropriate for every business that's out there. Once you figure out what that target profile looks like for your organization, you then do uh, an internal look and create your current profile. Um, the way to do this is by going through an assessment of the 108 controls and determining what are you doing today? Do we have these policies in place? Are we backing up data? Is data at rest encrypted? Uh, all the different things that that they ask throughout the um, assessment will help you determine where you are today. When you marry that up against the target profile, you'll get a gap analysis. That gap analysis essentially serves for what you have left to do to get as secure as you've identified you want to be as an organization. Again, this is not like um, a HIPAA compliance where you're gonna necessarily check off the four boxes and say, okay, We've covered that compliance, let's go back to work. This is about making your organization more secure every day. Once you've gone through that gap analysis, um, they, uh, they've defined four different tiers to indicate where you are uh, in the cybersecurity ecosystem. Uh, tier one they call partially, um, partially implemented, and as that, uh, it's defined as you have no formal processes in place, Essentially, you're waiting for something to happen, and when it happens, you'll deal with it. Um, tier two is called risk informed, which means you understand what's going on out there, you're paying attention for what's happening, uh, but you have no formal policies in place to deal with it when it does happen. Uh, tier three, uh, they named repeatable, and repeatable means you have policies and procedures in place, but not a ton of tools to deal with incidents in real time that happen. So you may detect what's happening, you, you've got policies in place to try to um, defend and defer against some types of attacks, uh, but you don't have the tools in place to deal with it on a real time basis as things change. And the most evolved of the tiers is called adaptive, and that is an organization that's implemented enough controls in their organization to be able to deal with attacks on a real-time basis. When things happen, they understand quickly how to isolate that attack, how to reduce the, the threat surface that's happened, minimize the damage done to their organization, and recover quickly. 